Okay, uh, so let's start to be on schedule. So this is the talk about the auto, what, the, what the automotive team is working on. And uh, my name is uh, Lukáš Lansky and I'm the team leader of the automotive team and uh, we will be co-presenting with Alex, who is the, our software engineer and uh, we will uh, try to show you what are all the activities that we currently uh, are doing. Uh, we will try to leave some questions session at the end, so please bear with us as we go through. So first, uh, automotive team, so we are currently nine. Uh, uh, mostly software engineers, we have a, a laboratory where we have our hardware in, in, in Nuremberg and some, uh, also some roles for the processes regarding the requirements and and stuff. So this is the team. So myself, Bogdan, Pavel, Narges, Christian, Veroslav, Alexander, Nathan, and Mitra. Uh, in general, we run very lean. So what you will be seeing later, almost every single thing, somebody, somebody is actually running it. Yes. Yeah? So kind of, uh, it's not like we would have a. Uh, although, although you see some test engineers, but uh, and uh, software engineers, but typically they are in charge of the projects themselves. So. But let's get into uh, f the main, uh, one of the main activities, which is what we have in the production. So one of the major OEMs, if you go and buy certain programs and cars, this is what you will find, uh, uh, you will find our Linux there. So what is it? Yeah, so what we deliver? So it's a customized uh, distribution. Of course, we base on the proven, uh, proven stack of SLES, and that's actually a pretty important stuff, but then later, and I will show you some details, we do things on top. Uh, so what are the differences to the, to the, to the SLES? Yeah, so uh, we try to keep the code base as close as possible, but as we've seen in the presentation uh, in, the, in the morning. Of course, our customers have custom demands, so there are some differences. And uh, of course, we, our package set is much less than uh, SLES. So uh, you can see that, for example, the, we are using the real-time kernel, but heavily customized. So we have more over 50,000 configuration differences compared to standard SLES kernel. Yeah? And, uh, we are generally divide our delivery into the two images. One is the base image. That's the image that runs in the cars. There we are, it's very small. Yeah, it's uh, using squash FS and now it's around 60, 60 megabytes. And just to give you some taste how big it is, it's around 100 packages. Then of course there, are, uh, there, are, there is something called development overlay, which our customers use for the development work, but that's not what ends up in the production. Uh, we, of course, our main activities are to reduce the dependencies or the differences, and of course, uh, in the car, we cannot have a GPL v3 license, as uh, maybe you will hear, hear more later on, and uh, because of the, of the tivolization topic. This is running on x86, but we also su support ARM. And uh, maybe a question that you might have is what our customers are running on it. So this is not, and there was a question in the previous talk about the infotainment. This is not what runs on the infotainment, on the dashboards. This runs behind the scene, basically doing some routing and planning. So generally vehicle functions, yeah. But we don't get, of course, access to that. So ba our customers see us, see us as an infrastructure to run these things, and of course, the, the main added value they, they see in the application layer, and then they keep it for themselves. Okay, then let's move on to speed a little bit. So what is our added value? So as said, we inherit from SLES, but we do things on top. And uh, just, to, just to name these, we have a, the traceability is key for our customers. So we have a traceable processes of uh, uh, applying uh, updates, uh, testing, and release, releasing things. So we can always uh, 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 first to deliver, and the second to traceable, to prove that everything is traceable. And in case 
we can say, okay, how this line of code end up in our, our distribution. The second part is CV handling. So again, we rely on, on, on our security team, but on top we have a tooling that, that uh, uses the Smash APIs to connect to it and we retrieve it for all the relevant packages and we, and we basically scan it regularly to be able to provide a list of outstanding CV list to the customer. So basically we are at each time we are able to say, okay, this product, this is the list of CVs of this severity, tell us what you want to fix and if you want to fix, yeah. Uh, additional testing, so we have a, uh, this is not, you see 7,000 test cases, but this is not what the test cases that we would develop. This is, this is the things uh, that we import and uh, there is a slide about that. And of course, uh, the important part is that uh, that this goes beyond the long-term maintenance support of SLIS, so basically there are activities regarding the backporting of the fixes and supporting the customer, which is actually an important bit because then when there are issues with the cars, then they don't basically mind from where it is coming from. They basically blame all the suppliers and everybody needs to investigate. So the part of our work is also to investigate a lot of, sh a lot of shadow issues. This is a little bit about uh, about uh, the process. So, as said, we don't. We of course built in open uh, the, in the internal open build service, but our source code is maintained in uh, in GitLab, and we have a dedicated GitLab CI pipeline. Again, the key why we are doing this is to have a complete traceability. Yeah. So the things get to, to, to import it to some development branches in GitLab. Then we have a, a process to. To, to all the updates goes through the, through, through the quality process, meaning reviews, until they got merged, and then it gets built. And the CI pipeline also delivers us, of course, the images, which come from the build service, but also we have a legal report, test report, so we are, we are requested to provide a detailed test report, what we have executed, what tests were skipped, what, ter, what, tests, have, what tests has failed. Of course, with also the build logs and of course the CV report. So basically, that's what I already covered. This is an example output of our of our uh, CV handling. So again, we we are hooked with the REST API to Smash, and then we have a confluence pages where we have all. This is just an example, but you can imagine how big it is. That for all the packages that ends up in the production images, then we can kind of see all the CVs at a, at a, at a given moment, and that's what we deliver. There is, a, there is a nice blog post written about it in case you are interested in more details. Yeah, this is the more details about the verification and validation. So SLE, that's what we inherit, but then we bring in a lot of uh, Linux test projects, MM test, we have also benchmarking testing, yeah, and we have some smoke testing regression running on the, the hardware that ends up in the car. So basically there is a lot of effort put into the additional test test and making sure that nothing breaks down between the two releases. And this is also a key value for our, our uh, customers. That's this. And the life cycle, so uh, we have passed several uh, production uh, milestones already. Now the development is, uh, is uh, in one of the programs is, 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 is finishing and we are moving towards the maintenance. What is the maintenance over here is that uh, because in the automotive industry they are still under, I would call it a schizophrenia that they used to basically develop the software in-house or via supplier. Once they, it reached production, they, it was frozen and nobody touched it ever again, of course with some exception. But now they are obliged even legally to fix the, to, to fix the um, vulnerabilities that might occur. So now we are in the kind of transition phase between, okay, let's freeze the software but update it at the same time, which means that in the maintenance we are fixing just very severe bugs that are uh, that are uh, there okay that's it uh, for this one the another the next project
The next project is, uh, is the Ageda project. So this is a collaboration project that we run with multiple partners. This is funded by German government, so it's run uh, uh, mainly from the, our Nuremberg o o office and our Nuremberg uh, uh, German colleagues. Uh, the idea here is to basically to, um, to force the companies to collaborate and so not everyone develops their proprietary solution around certain, uh, around certain use cases. And what are the use cases that uh, the, to start is one is regarding the collected vision. So you can imagine that there is a lot of, lot of data that uh, the, each car is gathering and exchanging, and in future it will be even worse. So every car has a, some situational awareness, and it can exchange with the I don't know the traffic lights, the, the even the uh, road signs, and uh, there it needs to exchange the data. So the one of the use cases is to, the goal is to demonstrate, so the end goal is to have a demonstration of this, th uh, uh, that uh, there will be a car and it will demonstrate how these things will communicate. It's, which of course including getting information from the cloud regarding, for example, traffic, weather, uh, uh, and, uh, and other things. So one is regarding, okay, how we share the information among uh, vehicle to vehicle and the vehicle to infrastructure. And the second use case is more about logistics, so basically to have a traceable, uh, traceable, um, uh, let's say, infrastructure for the goods. Yeah. So, uh, so how uh, goods and planning, uh, planning in the cloud. This is uh, less relevant for us, but we are still included because how we fit in. Okay, these are very high level, but we generally fit in with. What we want to provide is the operating system and the, and the way to execute the workloads workloads in this environment. Yeah? So, operating system case three, which which uh, now I, I will hand uh, hand over to Alex pretty soon, which we to, he will talk about Alp Automotive. So we are heading to uh, to provide the Alp Automotive with the case three and the portman for the for the containers. Yeah. So what is the plan, the short-term plan? So for the, there will be a demo in September. So there we want to have the Alpha Automotive up and running, demonstrating for the first uh, connection to the vehicle. Now, for now running on the Raspberry Pi, but uh, with some standardized data exchange between the vehicle and the, and the, and the cloud. And I think this is, uh, this is a good moment to hand over to Alex, who will give more information about Alpha Automotive. Hello. So, uh, let's talk about Alp Automotive. Uh, so, what is the idea of Alp Automotive? So, the idea is, is a purpose-built OS for uh, vehicles or for automotive, lightweight, immutable OS, uh, ideally with transactional update support and hardened security and compliance with uh, automotive standards, and uh, we also have in mind support for x86 and ARM and a real-time kernel. Uh, ideally, no GPL v3 in the final image or the core packages because there are issues uh, when it comes to automotive accepting GPL v3, and ideally no vendor locking as other products that we have. So. Isn't this just Alp Micro? Yes and no. We shared a lot of the same uh, core features, but Alp Micro focus on data centers and we are focusing on embedded automotive. So vehicles, you can consider vehicles as edge devices. So they have limited networking in certain cases, or they may have limited uh, hardware uh, specs or limited processing power depending on the type of car that you buy. So, for example, an uh, entry-level car has probably fewer computer cores than a SUV, high-spec, expensive car. And you may also have specialized components or, or things that don't really exist in data centers but only applies like network inside a car. It might be different than Ethernet. It can be different uh, storage options and and other similar uh, things that it's 
are like automotive driven and not really used by by anyone else. So there is also the real time behavior and, and mixed criticality that the idea is systems inside a car are usually more critical, but we're not talking about safety critical, we're talking about mixed criticality. So mixing uh, safety critical applications with non-safety critical applications and these non-safety critical applications could be running on Linux inside containers and everything. And also we want to comply with automotive process, for example, uh, A-SPICE. And we're going to talk about A-SPICE in the end. So, in a nutshell, what's the, the, the current status of ALP Automotive? It is based on ALP source uh, standard core, the same thing that ALP Micro is based. And we are replacing many, or a few packages with BusyBox to, to make it lightweight and remove some of the licensing issues. We are, we currently also have extra source packages because some things don't exist in ALP yet. So the idea is to probably submit these packages to, to ALP and, and have these packages as ALP, as part of ALP core. And we currently have a custom real-time kernel. Uh, I'm not sure if ALP has already a real-time kernel. There's a real-time kernel in, in progress, but that kernel doesn't support ARM. It's not enabled. So our kernel currently is, is, is supporting real-time also on ARM. So uh, that's the main difference for now. And we are also cleaning GPLVT and, and removing bashings from where it's possible. So reducing some dependencies and, and removing some packages or replacing some packages with uh, different alternatives. And for those that are interested, we also have images available for x86 and ARM. So in case you want to try, you can run on a virtual machine or you can deploy to Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah. So the workloads, the ideas that the, the, everything in ALP should be running in workloads. So we also have the, the concepts of, of workloads. And the main thing is it's containers and, and Kubernetes. So, so containers is a big topic. And we also have open AD kit that is also containerized. And there's automotive grade Linux. That is an idea also that it can possibly be containerized or, or virtualized. Uh, and other things that we didn't look too deep in yet uh, is, is adaptive AutoSAR, ROS2, and Android Automotive. So a bit more details on containers. What are the current issues that we have uh, with containers running inside cars is there is no real standard defined on how to run containers inside the cars. So if you search or try to understand, each company is saying one thing, how you should or should not run. So there is no consensus yet. And containers are great because you can do isolation and flexible development and, and everything that comes with the good. And there are some emerging efforts when, when you search for academia uh, topics related to mixed criticality uh, containers. Uh, so there is no, also no, when you try for that, there is no clear consensus yet. Just what I found is, is some academia or research papers. So <clears throat> as there is no standards, uh, we have some ideas how to solve that. Uh, Kubernetes itself might be too big. And K2S is great because K2S is built for the edge. So we, are, we want to leverage that and use K2S as a possible orchestration solution for for cars, but there could be cases where K2S might also be too big, and for that, we also want to support Podman or NetCTL with, with systemd for container execution when you don't need a complete, complete orchestration system. So, but Podman current has some issues with GPL v3. There are some dependencies that currently it would be hard to remove it, so there is also the idea as NetCTL as an alternative. So. We haven't decided yet, and if one, anyone knows a good automotive case where we could try different things or experiment with things, uh, feel free to share. But the idea is that we support multiple things because it will be the customer that will 
have the final decision on how he, he, he or she or they want to run uh, containers in cars. So providing multiple options, I think, is, is a better solution than just having one single solution that doesn't really fit everyone. So the next is the next uh, the next workload is is open AD kit. Open AD kit is a uh, is a reference framework for software de defined vehicles. It's it's built around cloud it's, it's cloud native and it's built around ROS2 and it has a microservice architecture and it's a blueprint for for Sophie, so it's the first blueprint for for Sophie. So I'm not sure how Sophie is. I'm not sure how to explain, but it's it's a consortium sort of. So uh, you see the the, the bits that uh, OpenDKit is providing is perception, planning, control, and then you have the AOL that is the Sophie's reference implementation. Uh, the second, or the third, it workload is automotive grade Linux. That automotive grade Linux is, is a collaboration project from from the Linux Foundation, and the idea is to provide 60 or 70 percent, 70 or 80 percent of the starting point for uh, software in, in vehicles. So the idea is to provide probably. Uh, softwares for all the bits, including infotainment, connected cars, and, and automotive, uh, autonomous driving. So it's an entire platform that you could leverage as a base to build your next car. So the project is not there yet, but they are working towards this goal to have 70 or 80 percent, and it's probably a good idea to, to support this kind of workload because it could be the next thing that automotive companies might, might be using. So that's it for uh, Alp Automotive. And for now, uh, for now we, we also have some project demos that we, we do for like conferences. And one that we did in Embedded World was the full stack demo. Uh, the full stack demo, it's a project that it's Linux and containers uh, with over the air updates and it's a it's a toy car, or not a toy car, but it's, it's a pie car kit, like a selfing driving kit for like bringing around that drives around. So we have containers that are uh, steering the car or reading the, the path and, and controlling the car. So this is based on SD, based on Carvos, what we showed before, and it is doing AB updates because Carvos has no BTFS, so we're using different partitions for the, the, the updates of the system, and we can also do updates in the running containers. So this was built with Podman and, and Systemd, and it, it's capable of driving around uh, path line. So there is a picture, and you can see that the car uh, it steers. It can read this line and it can steers and, and go in circles. So, so the idea is that there is a problem. The car is not working properly, and we update the car on the fly, and then the car starts to to work properly. Uh, the next demo, the, the next project that we're working for is, is the an hypervisor-based demo that's more close to what automotive is currently using. So you have uh, you have your hardware, you have an hypervisor, and you have Linux and or Linux and Android and, and a real-time OS running. So the idea of this is to present a SUSECOM and will be based on, on Alp Automotive or Alp. And for hypervisor, we chose Zen for now. Uh, and RTOS is running Zephyr, and if you want to know more, I suggest to visit or to watch uh, SuzeCon because we're going to be presenting this uh, soon. So this is not yet finished, but it's almost uh, close to. So this is for the demos, and I give back to Lucas to talk a little bit about ASPICE. Before the ASPICE, I don't know what the time is, but do you have any questions? Because the ASPICE is the process to pay care, so, so. That's not these yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, understand it's it scoops through, so.
Yeah, yeah. Yes, so So the question is what we are targeting as a product. So the first part, the, the part that I've shown over here, the QM Linux, that's the part that is in the production. So we are targeting a unit that's in the car, we are running in the car, and this is the unit that is responsible for vehicle functions. In the car, we have various units that are responsible for various things, but this is a unit that is, uh, you can see there's a gateway, which you cannot see, uh, it's not connected to the dashboard or anything, but behind, it's executing vehicle functions. For example, planning when you are changing the lanes autonomously, then it's probably planning how to change the lanes, yeah. So, but we don't get access to these workloads. We just know that this is what the, our customers are probably running there. What they are running there is, is, is something called Adaptive AutoSAR, which is a kind of a software standard. So this is, this is what we are currently in the production. With the Alp Automotive, we go beyond that, and we also try to look into the infotainment. So these automotive grade Linux, Android Automotive, and all these stuff, these are already more infotainment systems. Yeah. And there is a third part, which is the safety Linux, safety Linux, and this is now kind of aside because uh, this is, there we are more working on this uh, approach of looking into the hypervisor-based setup because currently we cannot deliver safe Linux. So all the functions that you see here, uh, uh, here that are executed in the production cannot kill anyone. There is something else that saves the day. Yes. Yes, and that's in the. There is now a factory line somewhere that the car that goes out is flashed with the our distribution. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we can uh, later. I don't know. What yeah, I think we ran out of time, so I would, uh, maybe we can all the, uh, maybe one question, one more question, and then we stop. So when it comes to, uh, uh, you at, at some point you mentioned uh, uh, that uh, throughout the process they're generating a software bill of material. Uh, not really software bill of materials, but parts of it. So for example. It's, uh, it's, it's in the picture. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, for example, we deliver the CV reporting, the legal report, yeah, meaning that we li all the licenses that we have there, so all these aspects, but not a full software bill of materials, but kind of parts of it that are then delivered to our customer that then probably packs it in some more large software bill of materials. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We have a, uh, HTML and other reports that we deliver. Yeah. Are they in the car wash of MQA or, or are they generated somewhere else? Uh, they, there are various tests. Maybe that's a big topic where we can touch base. I can explain more details, yeah. Okay. But, but our reports include all the testing, including open, key, open QA, but there are others also. Yeah. Okay, that's so unfortunately, we ran out of time, so sorry that it was a little bit scooped through because there was a lot of cover, but if you have any questions, we will be outside here in the, uh, during the day and Alex hold the week, so don't hesitate and ask us, so. Thank you.